Hey everybody, today on Rotto Runs Through, we are going to be having the final episode of the Rotto Q&A show. 40 eps, uh, so many questions answered, it's been a great run, but uh, this is where it's going to come to a close, or rather, it's going to switch from one format to another, and I'll talk about that in a second. Before I get to that, I want to do a quick shout out to one of my favorite things in all of board gamedom, it is the yearly Uganda Village Board Game Convention and Science Camp. Uh, they are crowdfunding now to raise money to put on their 2024 edition. And folks, if you've never heard me talk about this before, it is absolutely amazing. Getting these Ugandan kids a big step up in life as they learn about science and art and you know other cultures around the world and um, you know get self-confidence I mean so much comes out of this and it's all from playing board games every year uh, they put on this multi-day convention where kids from around the country get to come and stay um, so this is a convention that provides you know food and housing as well so the funds raised are absolutely essential to its success. And you can help out too. I mean, just look at these kids. I mean, this is literally, you will find no better example in all of board gamedom, the idea of board games actually changing lives, improving lives. And you can help out with this. Um, just go to the page. Uh, I've got a link for it down in the show notes. It's right up there at the top. Very easy to spot. It breaks down all the types of games, what lessons the kids are are learning what their successes have been in the past. Did you know last year um, this whole uh, system won the uh, 2023 Gandhi Foundation International Peace Award? It is such a big deal, um, you know. And the kids are learning so much. Uh, you know, it's instilling in them a love of board games. I love one of the features they talk about here is I'm um, talking about um, you know their own cultural board games that they can um, enter, uh, you know, a big, uh, what do you call them, tournaments and win deluxe versions of the games they play themselves that are representative of their own culture, um, you know, as well as being introduced to Twilight Imperium, of all things. Look at that, playing Twilight Imperium. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Folks, I, again, I can't stress enough, uh, anything you can offer, you can just type in whatever you want. They've also got some backer uh, levels if you want want to actually like put your name inscribed on some of the tables or chairs or whatnot. I put my money where my mouth is. I just back this morning. There I am. By the way, if like me, you are a UK taxpayer, uh, you can, yeah, you know, when you back, you get a bonus automatically via gift aid. So there can be even more help you can give these uh, kids. Um, and I, 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 I think it's Absolutely phenomenal. I'm always excited to hear about it. Again, go, you know, go forget about this Q and A, um, or put this on pause. Follow the link down in the show notes. Just spend a few minutes, and if you've just got a few bucks or you know whatever your monetary um, system is, you could make a huge difference in the lives of some really wonderful kids. So I just wanted to throw that out there, um, and Ben. I am just continually amazed. Uh, it's put on by the uh, Chrysalis Youth Empowerment Network. And uh, it's just, again, this is the best of us. This is the best thing you will ever hear about all year in relation to board games. And you can help make it better. So please consider. Okay, now um, let's get back to the final episode of the Rado q and Of course, I've been talking about this. Um, you know, in the last few episodes coming up, this is it. Um, but, but this is it publicly. Folks, um, the Q&A has already continued. As I've mentioned in the past, we're just switching over to the questions you submit to questions at rotto.com are now being answered over at patreon.com as part of my monthly ramble. I've already done one. Uh, let's see, let me bring it back up here. Uh, you know, so this was uh, my you know my June 2024 ramble. The QA returns, and I did a, an hour long preview of a bunch of games from Origins, but all kinds of fun topics like my convention plans for 2024. What will gaming be like after I retire from Rotto Runs Through? Um, you know, favorite things to do at a convention. Oh, the, we uh, there was a really fun topic about finishing creative tasks. Somebody was talking here about um, you know trying to do a board game design, and Jen, who is a creative 
creative artist herself gave a lot of really great suggestions. So um, the Q and A. This is this is just the beginning, folks. I'm, I've already got some questions submitted for the next one. AJ returns, which I am uh, very excited to hear what she has to say after my polemic about politics and board games. So we're going to follow up with that and you know all other kinds of stuff. Folks, you can keep sending your questions to questions at rado.com. They're just going to be a- answered now as part of the monthly Rado Ramble which is a monthly show that at the $2 a month level, if you support the show, you can hear me answer your questions and cover a new fun topic, like uh, topics I've got coming in uh, the next few months. Oh, I'll be doing uh, Essen and Gen Con super deep dive previews. I'm planning on uh, doing a video about all the games that Jen and I are going to take on the road for our next six-month RV trip that'll be starting later this year. Uh, we'll be doing Jen's top 10 games of 2020. 24 as a special ramble episode. Oh, I've got an idea. I'm looking. F- I'm thinking about revisiting old top tens of the year. Like my top ten games of 2012. Does it stand up? Are any of those games gone? Have they been replaced by other things? And why? You know, and, do- and doing a series of that. It sounds like a lot of fun. Plus, I will continue to answer your questions. So keep sending them to questions at rotto.com. Okay, folks. I think that is enough preamble. And- And now, for one last time, let's get to those cues. Here we go. Last question, folks. And then Jen will be here, but this is my last uh, solo. Make it good, Yazid. In a recent episode of a Board Game Barrage podcast, the crew discussed different stages they went through in the hobby. One of which was constantly chasing games people were talking about and hunting down every game that was recommended to them. I've been in that stage, definitely. Now they find themselves much more relaxed and only buying games that matter. To them, they specifically talked about curating rather than collecting, having 100 games you love and upgrade rather than 300 games you just like. Assuming you're not, assuming you are not a board game reviewer, what steps would you take to avoid falling into the trap of chasing the new and shiny? Personally, what I found to be effective is to limit purchases of games that are three years old or older. Oh, don't buy anything new. This achieves three things: allows me to hype to die down, the market to stabilize, for errata rules to be corrected. Uh, Don't forget one more thing saves you a lot of money. You're probably getting most of those games at half the price you would have had to pay if you got them within a month of them coming out. Don't down, don't downplay that. That's also a reason to do it. I got this habit from buying video games, and it's very appropriate here too. On a similar note, I started appreciating older games that stood their ground, ones that remained special despite the thousands of games coming out every year. A huge example of this is Castle of Burgundy or Twa. Uh, many dice-chucking manipulation heroes came out uh, that, while great, never topped or replaced these two for me. A uh, great channel that highlights these older games is Board Gems by Daryl Boone, and he's the founder of the OG Guild on Board Game Geek. And his channel focuses on those old forgotten gems in board gaming. I don't think Twa and uh, Castles of Burgundy are forgotten, but I know what you, I understand what you mean. Do you think we as gamers should look at older games and highlight them more often? Is a game really replaced with, when a newer, more polished game comes out with similar mechanisms? Uh, it's replaced uh, if they're better. Um, and more polish, uh, you know, that, that is one way to uh, categorize it better. Let's look at that. Let's, for one more time, let's go to gone.rado.com. Let's see recent games that I've gotten rid of because they were replaced. Let's see if it actually opens. Gone.rado. There we go. Okay, there it is. So, go back to the browser. Remembering to go to the browser. Turn. Oh, that's too bright. Turn it back to dark. Dark mode, please. Come on. Shift Alt D. There we go. So games. Uh, well, you know, CO2, CO2, a game that I love. I it was my second game from Vita Lasarda. It's probably my favorite game from Vita Lasarda. I will simply never play this game again now that I've played Daybreak. Um, they're both basically just the, the same topic of trying to you know develop green energy and save the planet. But CO2 is a competitive game. A Daybreak is a cooperative game, and I like te- Daybreak 10,000 times better. And I just cannot imagine ever, ever, for the rest of my life, no matter how much I once, and, I, and still, I should say still, love CO2, there's no way I'll ever play it when I could play Daybreak instead and get two games of Daybreak and one game of CO2 and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I mean, that's a new game replacing an old game for me. Um, but if I'd gone the other way, if I'd recently played Daybreak and I'd come across CO2, 
I mean, I, I, it doesn't get a pass for me just because it's old. Um, you know, and, and again, CO2 is an amazing design. Honestly, I probably would keep it, but I literally just don't have shelf space. Um, and um, if I, and honestly, I'd probably keep it if it was my original, what was it, Stronghold version of the original CO2, because the CO2 Second Chance box is huge. And one of the reasons I get rid of games is because I, oh, I get rid of bigger games sooner than small games, so I can fit more games on my shelves. Um, but still, it wasn't that that pushed me to get rid of it. It was playing Daybreak and realizing, oh, even though they're very different games, they still scratch the same itch, and one does in a much better way. So uh, I'm getting rid of that, right? And um, Overboss. I loved Overboss. Overboss came out at the same time as Cascadia, and I liked them both equally well, and I kept both. Recently, I played the Cascadia expansion. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Landmarks, Cascadia Landmarks, and it so elevated the game of Cascadia that I realized, okay, I don't need to keep Overboss anymore. Because while I like them both side by side enough to keep both, even though they're, they had a, there were a lot of things different, a lot of things the same. And at one point, I might have gotten rid of Cascadia to keep Overboss if I was going to keep one. The Casca- I mean, But I kept them both because I really like both of them. But the Cascadia Landmarks expansion so elevated Cascadia that I was like, okay, there is just no reason for me to keep Overboss. There, there's just not. Um, you know, and so you'll see stories like that throughout, you know, littered throughout here, definitely. Uh, um, you know, through the, uh, the graveyard of games I've said goodbye to. How many games are here? I think this is 100 on this page. Is that what it is? Um, yeah, no. Yeah, here's a list of 1,200 games I've gotten rid of, each of one of them explaining why I got rid of them. Um, you know, and it goes back quite a ways. But regardless, uh, coming back to you. So your question... Uh, should we look at older games? Well, yeah. I mean, for no other reason, because you can get them for a, a fraction of the price. I mean, honestly, to me, that is the best reason to do it. Um, because I'm obviously, I'm probably going to fly in the face of what the fine folks at the Board Game Barrage podcast said. Uh, given my druthers, um, Oh, basically, I'm a cult of the new guy. I, I crave new stuff. But I'm also a firm believer in the idea that people stand on the shoulders of what came before. And what comes after is better. I think um, the, the works of literature today are implicitly, objectively superior to cave drawings. But the works of literature today came from cave paintings. There is a direct through line. And now that's not to say that you know the great works of classic literature um, don't aren't important and aren't meaningful and aren't breathtaking works of art in their own right. But who's my favorite author? Probably John Irving is more, probably my favorite um, fiction author. And I personally would find his works greater than more um, engaging and satisfying and more fun to read than busting out the Iliad, right? Uh, about it. And by the same token, chances are, to my taste, and this doesn't mean it has to be for you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it? Yeah, yeah, uh, not the case for you, and not the case for board game. Um, but yeah, new games are coming out all the time that so push beyond what came before. And I mean, I know this because I'm always rating them, right? I mean, heck, I, mean, uh, 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 I can go back to top. Top.rado.com. This is actually a really interesting way to look at this, right? Because, um, right, uh, 2023. There are 29 games from the year 2023 that I love enough to keep. And they range from, you know, 9.2 down to uh, 7.7 in, in terms of my overall rankings. But if you scroll all the way to the end of this, down at the bottom, this is my best years according to their top tens. Uh, the person who made this site for me, and once again, thank you so much, basically takes how I ranked my 10 favorite games of a given year and tallies them all up and um, basically you know, ranks them in my overall ranking of games. So currently, the best year um, in board game history for me in terms of high-ranking games is 2019. Then 2020, then 2023. Then 2016, 2022, 2021. You will notice, you will notice that the newer overall, I am as a 
uh, you know, as an overall um, gestalt of my my enjoyment, I am finding more high ranked games these days than from years gone by. Right, um, and again, you know, because this uh, this adopts for the fact that hey, well, that's not fair because back in you know twenty in twenty eleven, there weren't as many games coming out, right? But there are enough for me to know that uh, twenty eleven, you know, and some of my greatest, highest ranked games of all time, including the Castles of Burgundy and Trajan, very appropriate, are hugely important to me. And yet, twenty eleven, the ten best games I played in twenty eleven combined are so far down on the list because, sure. The games, the best of the best of 2011 are some of the best of all time. But the majority of what was in 2011 are games that I just don't rank anywhere near as high because just across the board, game designers are better at their job today than they were 10 years ago or 15 years ago. They're just better at it. And that's not to say that these games aren't fantastic too. And they don't, you know, deserve to live in the pantheon of huge important things. But I believe that as time goes on. Um, you know, things build. Now, that's not always the case, but uh, I mean, it's certainly the case right now for board games because, as I said many times on the podcast, we are so in the baby steps. We, you know, to compare us to the growth and maturity of the movie industry, because I think, you know, and I've long hesitated to give in to the, wow, movies today just aren't as good as they used to be. I've always fought back against that because I've always looked at it that when somebody says that, they're comparing everything that came out this year compared to the cherry-picked best of the best that came out of yesteryear. Oh yeah, well yes, if you compare every single movie that came out in 2023 to only the 10 best films of you know 1970, of course 1970 is going to look better. But if you compare like to like the 10 best of this year and the 10 best of 1970, I don't know if that's the case. Now, I maybe... Maybe there's an argument to be made that the 10 best of 19 of 2023 films are not as good as the 10 best of uh, of 1973. I suspect they are, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> that's a test I would have to do. I've never done. It. I my my gut is that's the same. The, um, but it was certainly not the case back in 1923 that the any movie from 1923 is just based on, you know, compared to any movie from 1933. Just the lessons that were being learned, the technological breakthroughs that were happening, the uh, acquired knowledge of these filmmakers allowed the filmmakers in 1933 to be quantum leap ahead of the filmmakers of 1923. And that's where we are right now. So the game designers of 2023 are quantum leaps ahead, in my uh, feeling. And I just proved it to you. I just showed you the numbers are huge leaps and bounds across the board, if you're taking everything into account, above the best of the best from just 10 years earlier. And that's where we are. Now, maybe 100 years from now, when board games have reached a maturity level that the film industry has reached at this point, maybe that won't be the case. And games that came out in um, in uh, 2112 are really every bit as good as the game that comes out in uh, 2122, right? That probably is going to be the case. But we are still learning so much. Every new game, what's... Uh, uh, you know, the, the game on my table right now. What is this? This is a 4X game. This is Pillars of Heracles. This does so many things so much better than every other 4X game I've ever played. Not because this designer was smarter or more creative, but because the designer of this game stood on the shoulders of what came before. Stood on the shoulders of um of v- of uh, not Vila Sarda of Lada Shavadal and others of Martin Wallace and others, and made something that I would say is a superior product because it took so many lessons learned there and built on them. Now, that's just my opinion. Uh, There's going to be many people who vehemently disagree, and that's okay. This is all subjective stuff we're talking about. So anyway, that's why I always say it is such an amazing time to be a board game fan, we are you know uh, getting a front row seat for such rapid evolution. 
you know, the same way. I mean, we're we're going through moments that must be the same as the first time people saw the Wizard of Oz, or the first time they watched the jazz singer. You know, um, you know, the first time they heard a voice in a movie or saw a color. We we're getting to experience. Yeah, that's like the first time we played a deck builder. You know, we're we're getting to experience those moments, and we're so lucky to be here right now. And I, that's why I'm excited. It's why I'm always bouncing off the wall. It's why. You know, even if I play 300 games a year, I you know I never have to worry about playing garbage because there's so many great games and there's more great games coming out every year. Uh, just as and there's a higher of of the games that come out, a higher percentage of them are great than the ones that came out 10 years ago because lessons have been learned. That's the way we work as a species. The fact that we build on what has come before and we improve it. So. That is not to say that the Castles of Burgundy and Troyes aren't amazing. And for my personal taste, nothing has eclipsed them. Interestingly, Troyes, the very developers tried. They brought out Black Angel. Black Angel is not as good as Troyes. It does some things really, it does some things better than Troyes. But overall, I still think Troyes is a stronger design. I wish Black Angel could have improved. If Black Angel had ever gotten an expansion to just do a couple little things, it could have supplanted Troyes. But there are a couple things that Troyes did that they abandoned because they felt it wasn't necessary. And it turns out they were crucial to the experience of Troyes. You can watch my Black Angel final thoughts to know what, what that's about. But all that said, I just want to say I doff my cap to you. I think that is a brilliant idea. Completely ignore the games of today. Go onto my channel and do not look at any video that I have put up more recently than three years ago. Go watch my videos. Excuse me. Three years ago. Is there a way to do that? Well, of course, there's an easy way to do that. Go back, coming back one more time, the last time, to Board Game Geek. Go to um, you know my geek list, uh, which is actually, I think, like the number three most popular geek list in all of Board Game Geek, as evidenced by thumbs. I remember reading that at one point. Um, but anyway, that doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And uh, just click on this thing, this items, and you can see, just look through this list, right? Move back to, what are we at, 2024? So go back to 2020, at the end of 2020, and start there. Start with Century Golem Edition and Endless World, and work your way backwards. Uh, and and go, go check out um, Flourish. Go check out West Kingdom. I mean, you know, actually, maybe even a year earlier than that, quite frankly. Maybe even go further back. But yeah, Beyond the Sun. Nobody's talking about Beyond the Sun now. It's not like Beyond the Sun has gotten any worse. Beyond the Sun is still great. Man, this still feels fairly new to me. I feel like you should go back even further, quite frankly. Because then you could start getting these games at super cheap prices. Um, if you uh, don't just go back... Uh, if you Let's go back to... Don't go... Uh, you know, don't, bu don't buy anything earlier than 2019. Because right here, in 2019, folks, I... Let's see here. Coming up to 2019. Oh, so many games I've covered over the years. And this, of course, is presuming you like my style of games, right? Obviously, if you don't like the kind of things I like, do this with some other channel. Um, if they've got a geek list that makes it easy for you to do. But anyway, 2019. Right, 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 right. Um, you know, concern yourself with games. Uh, you know, geez, Louise. Where am I at here? Um, 1160 minus... 2019, 2019, 2019, 2019. Oh my gosh, there's, there's so many of them. 1160. Uh, 13. Um, yeah, so um, not quite 200 games I covered in 2019. Go back and check out Expedition to New Dale. Go back and check out Circadian's First Light. Oh my gosh. Go back and talk out, check out Pharon or Aquatica, which is just about to get reprinted now. Um, if it's got or, or, or Arion or Black Angel. I was just talking about it. Or the reprint of Predator Porter or Neom. Oh my gosh, Neom is so amazing. And these are all amazing games that stand toe to toe with the best of what's available right now. And you'll be able to get all these for a fraction of a price. And as long as you can um, just you know, turn off the hype machine. You'll, you'll have a great time. You'll get to play amazing games, and you'll save a lot of money. And you know what? Three years from now, you'll be able to play Earth or whatever new hot thing is, because you'll be able to get it for 20 bucks instead of 50 bucks, and, uh, and it'll still be just as good then as it is now. Honestly, Yazid, this is freaking brilliant. Um, and I, I doff my cap. Uh, it's just I am so glad that that is one of the final things that will ever be said on this podcast um, because it is such a, a 
a pure truth. And I thank you for sharing it with me and everybody who is listening and watching. And folks, that's it. Because now um, we've got a few more game related questions. So Jen is going to join me, and then we'll do the uh, the personal stuff, and then I will have a t- I will say a tearful goodbye because I've already recorded it uh, yesterday or maybe the day before, and I did cry at the end, even though I promised myself I wouldn't do it because it is the end of nine years of my life. And um, yeah, so hang on, we'll be right back. Boop boop boop. Okay, folks, welcome back. Jen is here. There's her hand. <laughs> and for the last time, we're going to answer some questions. Um, right, honey pie. We've got a few Q&As, then we'll get to the personal stuff, like always, folks. Okay. Um, and you know this is the last one, right? I think you said you reorganized things because the voters voted. Yeah, they'd yeah. the voters have... said they'd rather have another run-through than continuing the podcast. And so, let it be written, so let it be done. Well, they probably this asked the... us everything they ever might want to ask us in their... Yep. So, Thus ends nine years. We've been doing this for nine years wow. every month. Okay. Well, that is a lot of questions and a lot of answers. Then. There you go. Yep. Well, we just got a few more okay. and then they're all out of them. Okay. Unless, of course, like I'm sure I said right up front, because I'm recording this out of order, there will always be the <laughs> ramble. So you could start sending questions for that. But anyway, Daniel says, explaining my March question, which I'm sure we did not understand, <laughs> Three months ago, you got a question. Um, which game would you play 30 times in one month? And you responded, that's easy. I'll play 10-minute games 30 times a month. Sounds like a simple solution. My question now is a follow-up. Which games that last at least 75-ish <laughs> minutes, basically medium-heavy games, would you play 30 times in a month? Not in counting th- gloomy, 30 times in three months. Or 30 times in three months. So 10 times a month. Um... And, uh, let's see, I'm sure that's really more of a question for me, but I figured since this is the end, folks, I'll try to bring Jen in for a few gaming questions. Can you think of any game that you would want to play 10 times a month for the next three months? Um, what was that one that we just played that was about saving the world? And that is the Daybreak. Little... I think that Daybreak might be interesting enough to play 10 times a 10 month. 10 times a month, huh? Yeah, because there's so many different options. Like two and... times a week, basically. Yeah, and then Here you could, take. and you would have the time then because you you, you could... You scan all of those QBC <laughs> codes or what are they? Uh, QR codes? QR codes, yes. And, and find out really more about all of the actual projects that are going on in the real world. Okay. So that's one. You think of anything else? That's an interesting one. Um, and you think, I mean, you think that would hold up for literally well, there's two a and a half of... times a week, every week for three months. Yeah, I think it would because there's so many cards and so many projects and possibilities. Yeah. But I mean, the game is the same every time. It's yeah. just a matter of... So- Using different powers and stuff. Yeah, but I don't know. I think it would be interesting to really delve into the project. All right. Can you think of any others? Um, would it help if I bring up the uh, Gen Jogs list so it could tell you your favorite games? Yeah, let's do that. All righty, folks. You don't get to see the Gen Jogs because I don't know if you're a backer. A Gen Jogger. actually uh, gets to see a Recollector. A Rado Recollector is what it's called. Oh. If you back at that level. Uh, but let me see. I'm just going ahead and find the Excel sheet. Where does that sit? I, I think that sits in edit box. Yeah, it's in edit box, Gen Jog. Jog, there's the Excel sheet. So, your favorite is games sc- from the last few months. Hey, it's on the screen. Yeah, but they can't see that. Oh. All they can see is Word. And um, oh. yeah, I'm not recording the screen. Um, oh, the, the, the I The OBS that... program is recording words specifically. Ah. So, no, they do not see it. I'm sorry, I didn't know. All right, so big one, I mean, Earth. Also, we recently played the expand the Earth expansion. So Earth. Yeah. Uh, the, Which one is that one? Because we played several of them that are very earthy. Right. That's the one where um, you're playing the four by four grid of Earth cards, and then when you run them, you they run from top left to bottom right, and on your turn you pick one action. Oh, this is going to be hard, folks. Um, wow, she can't remember Earth, and we played that one so I many times. I just don't remember which one is Earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't even if think I you showed me the boxes. If I go to Rado Earth, I will show you. Bop, 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 bop. In the last one, it was literally your number two, and I had to show you the two boxes side oh, by yeah, side. Oh yeah, where you do the um, the you, eggs. You build the little things. Yeah, the towers. Yep. I can't remember the nests or mm-hmm. something. We just played wingspan, so I'm very yes. birdie today. Yep, you're very bir- wingspan is fresh in your mind. So would you play the Earth a couple of times? Yeah, that's a, a very week. good game. Yeah, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Give me something else to compare against. All right, so is that a yes? Yeah. Come on, get out of the way, Excel. 
All righty. Uh, let's see. What else have you really liked? Oh, the Blue Prince of Mad King Ludwig. Oh, that's so much fun. I don't know that I'd want to play it 10 times a month, though. Yeah? That's That may be a little bit much. Why not that one, but yes to Daybreak, would you say? Is Daybreak the one we just talked about with the QR codes? Yes. Okay. Um, because, like I said, there's every one of those projects is interesting and different, and mm. I think it can combine in a lovely way. Okay. Um, let's see. Other ones recently that you've really, really loved. Uh, the um, Comet. Do I have it around here somewhere? Yeah, this one. Right here. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, yeah, this one With where you're, where you're racing up and you're kind of hopscotching over. And once mm. you get an animal to the cave, you unlock their power. And it's, I mean, mm -hmm. when, you, when you play a card, you have to discard other cards to get an animal on the uh, map. And then we're just trying to move them up to the cave. Well, I don't remember the cave part. It, oh, it's just the space you have to go to. It's not like we okay. actually interact with the cave. It's okay. just the, the finish Oh, line. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a good one. Okay. So now you remember it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, I don't know that. I don't know. Um, how many times did we play Pandemic in France? I mean, we played that every night for like 10 nights, didn't we? Five nights. Well, I like, think it was, it was a like two a week. solid week. Yeah. Two, um, so I'm thinking, yeah, probably Pandemic. Okay. Um, if they came pandemic. out with, oh, um, what was the one with the, we always listened to the Nintendo music and it was the clouds and, um, we played it with Angela and David. Charterstone? Yeah. Charterstone. I'd play that. You would play that. A new one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, because that's because, I mean, you're just saying if we had a totally new one and we went through the entire legacy campaign. Yeah. So you would want to go through the legacy campaign of Charterstone again. Yeah. I think that's not. 30 times though because I think it's only 12 games and then we'd have to keep replaying it on our final mm, map yeah. and it would just be a regular worker placement game as opposed to unlocking lots of new stuff yeah mm. oh, I did really enjoy Charterstone uh huh um I'm looking around so yeah. many pretty so much wonderful art mm -hmm. on all of these boxes mm -hmm. I don't know what else give me some more uh, maybe well, I mean, we like so we just played Wingspan. <coughs> yeah. So that's fresh in your mind. How would you feel about that? No, I don't think I'd want to play that ten times a month for three months. Why not? Uh, I don't know. It just feels like it would be. All right. I mean, maybe we could get good at. So so far Agricola we've got again. one. Uh, you'd want to do Agricola. Maybe. I mean, we could get good at Agricola again. Get our brains back in the yeah. Agricola mode. Okay. Because I think sometimes we just get a little rusty, and then it's like, oh no, I should have done that on the first turn. Uh huh. Oh, I ruined my whole game after two after three turns because I didn't do the one thing on the first turn. I see another game that we played a few months ago back when we were still on the road that you rated super high was Flow, uh, and we played in the RV. If I could just fast forward to uh, this was the one. Come on, zoom out. Where we were exploring this, you know, frozen, oh, yeah. frigid wasteland, and you would either, you know, go out there and interact, or you just interact with the home, and you had your little helpers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yep, and there was the things that you could do up there that would. Yep, you, yeah, you yep. interact with the different locations in town, or you travel out and you eventually explore more, and eventually get strong enough to go explore the dungeon, and the deeper you go, and all that. You really like that one? Yeah, that was good. But I'm thinking if I was going to play a game thirty times, it would have to be something deeper, like. Pandemic or Frosthaven. Well, what does or deeper mean? Just more involved and stuff. This is a lovely game, but I don't know that it's a 30 timer. Okay. Well, some more, uh, you know, uh, drill down on what it takes to be 30 timers. Yeah, I think like something like Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, Legacy, or Pandemic Legacy. Um, uh, again, the uh, Charterstone. I did really like, I think. Charterstone's a really lightweight game. I know, but it had uh, that big long story and all sorts of. Yeah, new but again, that would only be twelve, and then you'd have to play it, um, you know, mm -hmm. twelve or you know more, even more. But time. I did want to play it again with Angela and David. Yeah, remember? So yeah, that's that twenty-four playments. Well, no, no, we. Oh, you're saying you'd want if we had two copies of it that you would want to play through its campaign oh, maybe several I'd wanna, times. I could play one with you, a two-player, and then play another time with other people like a four player like we did with Angela David mm -hmm. and that would be 24 of my 30 plays okay uh, apparently Jen loves Car Charterstone a lot I I'm do. really surprised okay you don't so remember that's... me really I love not it. this much but um what about 
Uh, Marrakesh is one of your favorite oh, recent games. It's a games. very good one. Yes, I I love it, but it's not as deep. I mean, I think what oh, you keep saying deep. I mean, to me, Marrakesh is an incredibly deep game. Yeah, but like Gloomhaven, where we got really involved in our characters and all that. So, okay, then the repeating thing here, other than Daybreak, which is, sounds like you're mostly just doing it so you can read more about climate change activism while you're playing the game, yeah. it sounds like you need a story campaign. Yeah, you there need you a, go. You need a storyline to play through. You do not want to play any game ten times a month uh, just as a standalone experience, like playing Agricola ten times a month. Because it doesn't have a story that pulls you through and, you know, your character levels up and all that. To play that much, you need that, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. Well, that's very interesting. I would not have thought that at all. I'd kind of oh. gotten to the point where I thought you didn't care about such things. I think I've gotten to the point where I don't have time to invest in something that big well, until I have time to invest in something that big. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, all this is assuming that, you know... Either you're getting paid a lot of money to do this because of Daniel's thought experiment or because you do have the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's what would you uh, be able to stomach? Yeah. Right. I think that pretty much covers it. I think, yeah, to play a game, maybe it's just you've, you've indoctrinated me so much into the cult of the new that mm -hmm. the idea of playing in three months, one game, 30 times, is, yeah. I don't know. It just would have to have something that pulls me along whether yeah probably storyline storyline mm -hmm. yeah i think that's exactly it okay all right well let's see for me um jeez uh could i play castles of burgundy tw two times a week for three months i think so there's enough variety there could I'm, I'm, now, I'm now i'm just looking at my top personal rank games of all time could i play twa probably maybe dominion because that's got so we've got so many yeah. um expansions for it well maybe yes or no yeah roll for the galaxy maybe because i love it so much yeah now jen is looking at my favorite oh i can put that on the screen uh looking at my favorites and she's saying hey so roll for the galaxy you you would you could imagine playing roll for the galaxy two times a week for three months yeah i mean although to be fair that's a half an hour game so we're kind of because we play it so fast so that one actually doesn't really count but you'd you'd want daybreak um let's see Personally, yeah, I would love to do Maracaibo because I think that's um, Alexander Fisher's greatest design, and especially with the expansion and the fact that, like Jim was talking about, it's got really great, it's, it's got simple storyline. I would love to get a chance to play through the storyline a couple of times. That would be amazing. So I think Maracaibo would be a high one for me. I just love that word, but I don't remember which game it is. Uh, if I show you, you'd, re you'd recognize it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Aeon's End? We have so much Aeon's End content now. And we actually have, interestingly, you know, we played through Aeon's in Legacy 1 and 2. We played them in prototype form. I've got the final version, so we've mm. never played them. So that's like two full Legacy campaigns we could play through. Okay. So I think Aeon's End would probably rank pretty high. And apparently it would appeal to Jen because yep. it's a storyline. And we've determined she needs that. And to me, it's just like an infinitely replayable game with all the variety of characters and bosses and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's a few. That's a few. Hopefully, Daniel, that answers your question one last time. Okay, um, continuing on. Number two. Continuing with the what type of war game would you and Jen like from last time? How about a cooperative war game where we are aliens or nations fighting evil entities uh, invading our galaxy or planet? So, Daniel's trying to talk us into playing a war game. Um, if it's a cooperative game where we're working together, just trying to defend ourselves from invading aliens. First of all, I don't like anybody in invading. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Well, to but go. we're not invading. We're protecting no, ourselves from the invasion. I know. I want the. I want everybody to play nice, mm -hmm. and for those guys to go home. Mm -hmm. well, <gasps> anyway, yes. So like that. I'm sorry. And long story short, it's a game about aliens coming to Earth, and we are just having to engage in you know War of the Worlds type stuff. There are alien troops advancing. I mean, you're not fine with it then. I mean, you're fine. Plan you're fine dealing with the uh, climate change, and that's certainly us trying to defend against horrible, um, you know, uh, things marching on us. You're fine playing Pandemic, which is about stopping mm. the spread of cubes. Well, if, it, if they were, if the cubes represent not viral infection, but instead aliens, um, you know, spreading across the earth, would that be fine? I guess I don't mind so much, you know, viruses because it's not like they're sentient beings. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I don't know. But you've been perfectly fine playing a lot of fantasy adventure games where you kill a lot of goblins and orcs. Yeah. They're sentient beings. True. Mm-hmm. But historically, they're all bad. <laughs> well, so are the aliens. Maybe not. Uh, what was the question? Um, would you find it palatable to play a cooperative war game where um, we are fighting evil entities invading our galaxy or planet? It wouldn't be my first choice. All right. So you still have failed, Daniel. That was your last chance to make Jenna Wargamer, and she's still not interested. Yeah, I guess I'm just not interested in war. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm not that interested either, but I mean, I'm, I'll always be up for a co-op game, I suppose, so I'd give it a go, but it would not be high on my list either. All right, and that's it, folks. We're done with games. So that was the final series of game questions, unless backers of the show start sending questions in, at which point they can start showing up on the rambles, which again, I'm sure I've already talked about at the beginning of this entire episode. So if you don't care about our final round of personal questions, well, sayonara as we ride off into the podcast sunset. Uh, thank you for listening all these many years, almost a decade. Wow. And um, if you want to hang around for those last personal questions, we'll be right back. Okay, folks, and that's it. All she wrote. All good things must come to an end, and uh, that this is where we part ways for Q&As. Although, like I said, I will continue to be doing it uh, for folks who continue to support the show, and thank you very much to everybody who helped keeps Rado running. And uh, just one last time, let me also say thanks very much to Ben and the folks at Chrysalis Youth Empowerment Network for putting on the Uganda Village Board Game Convention and Science Cap. One last call to ask action, folks. There's a link right there at the top of the uh, show notes. Uh, you can go very easily there and, uh, you know, literally change lives for the better through the power of board gaming. I mean, what gets better than that? Uh, anyway, though, uh, if you would like to continue to hear me and Jen answer your questions, well, you know what to do. Head over to uh, patreon.com slash Rado, or heck, you can join here on YouTube as well. There's buttons for both of those things. And uh, otherwise, I will now bid you adieu and sit here silently until you push a button. I know I said I'd be silent, but push. Push it. Push it good.